Uh, Mr. Barron, do you think the new WTO chief who is endorsed by Biden will be able to restore trust in the rule-based global trade regime? No, I, I think until you stand up, to, you know, she sounds like she's, um, I believe she's from Nigeria. She sounds like uh, she's a very well qualified and I'm sure very well intentioned. Uh, but the WTO has got more systematic problems than that. And the problem is like, like Geneva with the world, with the UN, really the operating units of the UN, which is not New York, they're really in Geneva, the World Health Organization and all the rest of them. They're essentially controlled by the CCP. The CCP is infiltrated and they control these as subsidiaries. WTO is too slow moving. It's been too, it's played patty cake with the Chinese Communist Party. As they have used, remember, the reason I mock the internet, the post war international rules based system is that the Chinese Communist Party were smart. They understood the rules and they used it in their own favor. They didn't play by the rules, they changed the rules. So, no, I, I think she's, although as well intentioned and she seems to be highly qualified. I don't think her going in there is going to is to change things. In fact, it may actually exacerbate the um, situation because Trump's not around. Remember, Trump didn't go to the World Trade Organization. He went right to the CCP, started putting on tariffs at home account uh, for all their violations and what they're doing to the world economy. And most importantly, what they're doing to the Chinese people, Lao Beijing. So, no, I think it's a great question. But I, I think we're the WTO, until it reforms itself principally about confronting the cheating and lying that the Chinese Communist Party has done, it's, this is, it's just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Kaso, Kaso, would you like to ask another question, please? Uh, yes. Uh, this question is about luck in coffee uh, with the account, uh, accounting scandal one. And luck in coffee filed bankruptcy in the U.S. Yes. What move should the Biden administration take for financial decoupling with the CCP? Well, look, I've been for financial decoupling for a while. We shouldn't allow, and Luckin Coffee is just an example of total fraud. They just made up the numbers. And one of the reasons they can make up the numbers, we don't hold them to an accounting standard that other companies that list on exchanges here, you know, uh, they don't really have to follow anything of what's called Sarbanes-Oxley, which is the, the set of rules we do for, for companies when they go public. And it was very tough given all the abuses you had in the internet crisis back or the internet implosion back in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s. The CCP companies don't have to do this and Luck and Coffee is just an example because people can relate that to Starbucks, uh, how you know all the numbers were kind of made up, all the growth numbers. And But that gets to a systemic problem of the CCP. And this gets back to the scientific data, Dr. Meadling says, facts, scientific facts, data, evidence, that you and Dr. Ming and all the great people that put this show together with your PhDs and doctorates understand about facts and how they are, they are uh, they're, they're objective, they're not subjective. Well, that's not the CCP's mentality. The CCP, a fact is what they deem to be a fact. If, it's, if they say it's a fact, then it's a fact. And you see this endemic in the system. That's why so many people and so many people of real promise leave China. That's why we've had this great diaspora of all this great talent. Because people that are intelligent and smart don't want to live in that system. They'd rather come to the West, leaving their homeland, because at least there it's a system that rewards science and data and evidence. And CCP is whatever the CCP says is, whether it's a financial record or whether it's what happened in Wuhan, the lab record. It's all the same thing. It comes from no belief in God, total materialism, that they're the most powerful thing on Earth or in the universe. And what they say, they're like gods, that they can just d dictate this. And we see in financial markets and the, obviously in, this, in, the, in the virus, we see that's just not correct. It's a, it's a lie. And that's what they, they live as a lie, yet Wall Street and the city of London and the global corporatists are comfortable with that. That's the tell. The thing is, the elites of the world and in Davos are comfortable kowtowing to Xi and, oh, you're wonderful and give us another speech and tell us what the numbers are going to be. Whereas Lao Beijing and the deplorables and uh, Gilets Jean in France are not comfortable with it because they understand with their common sense and basic understanding of life to understand that's all a lie. That's a lie. And Luke and Coffee is Luke and Coffee is just the financial uh, and business uh, uh, aspect of the Wuhan lab. They all go back to the same thing that everything is subjective to what the CCP says it is at that time. It's a great question. I apologize. I have to go now to get ready for the show, but I really love, you know, I love doing this uh, show, Dr. Ming and everybody 
the questions are the best questions I get all week from okay. other mainstream media for our people here in Washington, D.C. So your your questions are just really amazing. The level of research and thinking through what's important. So, Dr. Ming, it's always such an honor to come on here and be part of your be part of your show and talk to your audience. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Bannon. It's our honor to have you weekly. OK, thank you so much. Have a nice day. Ha 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 See you soon. Happy New Year, everybody. Great start to the year. Thank you.